Hello guys, we are going to do a live with Ra Chef Yin. All right, make sure to put below any questions you guys have. I'd love to see what kind of questions you guys have about the raw lifestyle. Hello, so Hello. good to meet you. Hi, Emma. Hi, nice how are you? you I'm good, today I'm good, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I finally had enough sleep. Oh, it's, 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 it's interesting because sometimes during bundle week, I, I wake up like four in the morning or something because I'm like, oh my God, I have so much to do. But today I woke up at six, so that was good. Yeah. Nice, nice. So what have you been doing to prepare and uh, make recipes for the bundle? Um, yeah, I've been like trying out all the, the different recipes. Um, and uh, today I'm going to try out something very simple from Wendy's uh, course. Uh, I know she, she's, she, um, uh, you spoke to her or she spoke to you? I mean, I know you guys did a live together as well. Mm -hmm. So she has like a, a, I think a, like a very simple one week meal plan. Um, and I think it's just three ingredients. It's just like bananas, um, celery and dates. So I thought that that would be nice because it's like, just like a super busy week. <laughs> I think I just like editing so many many videos and it's funny I I always tell people like um they don't tell you in culinary school that you need to have video editing skills <laughs> absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah so funny yeah so yeah. so yeah that's what I've been doing just either making recipes going live or editing videos which I do not like so I need to find someone to edit my videos for me yeah <laughs> hmm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's so exciting to do all the raw vegan bundle stuff. And there's so many recipes. It's honestly overwhelming. You have so many resources. It's it's so fun, though. It's so it's so great. There's so many great resources. So it's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I actually want to make a Twix recipe, but um, but I actually like need to eat lunch. So one of these lunches, I'll, I'll make your salad one because it's kind of like more practical because <laughs> I can't eat Twix for lunch. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I totally get that. Well, do you want to start us off by just telling what you created for the bundle? I'm really interested kind of what the backstory behind your course was. Sure, sure. So, um, yeah, so I'm Raw Chef Yin. I'm a raw vegan chef based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Um, so I've been doing this thing since 2016. And um, I used to like teach live in-person workshops, demos, you know, at yoga studios or at... Um, uh, vegan festivals so I've presented at like the Bali vegan festival Singapore vegan festival um, the Brighton summer vegan festival in UK Perth vegan festival um, uh, yeah but then because of you know the crazy events that happened I had to move everything online so I started uh, creating online courses instead also focus on raw vegan um, but because I'm Asian so I love my Asian food so um, I have this huge focus on raw vegan Asian um, cuisine and for this particular bundle I have created a course on uh, raw vegan Asian desserts I call it uh, Asian sweets and treats yeah um, let me see if I can bring the cover I forgot to open up the ebook so it's it's a course it's not just an ebook so there are also like um, the thirty over recipes in it and also it comes with like um, the I think there's something like 39 videos on how to make them as well. Because I know that um, a lot of people are in the US, so maybe these are, you know, like, are not familiar to them, so they've never seen it before. So I thought if I created some videos as well, they can actually see how it looks like and how to make it as well. Um, so I know that Lisa of Raw Food Romance made my jackfruit sticky rice. So that's like a Thai, you can find that dessert in Thailand and in Vietnam as well. Yeah, so um, it's jackfruit, it's stuffed with rice, but instead of rice, I use hikama. Yeah, I'm, and I use silly pass to make it sticky. So, um, um, oh, I, I love the shaved ice desserts um, in, in Japan and Korea. I haven't been to Japan, but I have been to Korea. So Korea has bingsu, which is a shaved ice dessert. Um, Korea, uh, Japan has their kakigori, uh, which is also a also shaved ice, but um, it's slightly simpler and I think the focus is more on the ice and the sauces, but not so much like Pingsu, the Korean one has like, 
you know, you, you put all sorts of things on top of it kind of thing. So yeah, I have that in my course as well. Yeah. So um, yeah. That's, That's amazing. Yeah. I, mean, I was going through your um, course. It's actually one of the first ones I looked on the Robin. Oh, it's amazing. There's so many great Thank recipes. you. Um, I tried Thank out, you so much. I, yeah, I tried out your uh, chocolate and ice cream and your chasey pudding, and it was so, so amazing, so delicious. Oh, nice, nice. What, Thank you so much. Yeah, what kind of led you going into the raw food and that whole cuisine? Oh, so <laughs> I always tell people I accidentally found out about raw food because what happened was um, I had just bought an ice cream maker, and I was trying to look for a um, healthy ice cream recipe and then I found this blog called This Rossum Vegan Life. I don't know whether you've heard of her before. It's uh, mm -hmm. Emily. This was like, yeah, almost ten, nine years ago, right? This was in 2014, in July 2014. So um, instead of uh, instead of like a healthy ice cream recipe, I found this recipe on a raw vegan lasagna, right? So and then I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I thought it looked really pretty because that was like my first time ever seeing a raw vegan lasagna. And um, I had all the ingredients in my fridge. So I just decided to make it. And then I was so blown away by the taste because um, I wasn't vegan then. Uh, I was kind of like flexitarian, pescetarian, like more of flexitarian. So um, I ate like maybe like 80% um, vegetables, but you know, I ate a bit of fish. Um, because people kept going like, oh, are you going to get your protein? You need your protein, you know. My mom's like, oh, every week she gives me fish to eat and like to cook. And then when I stopped doing that, she got really upset with me. But anyway, so I was um, uh, flexitarian then. So I, when I ate that raw vegan lasagna, I was like, wow, this tastes so good. I was like, it's only made from plants and it tasted so good. And then I was so impressed, like... Um, because usually when I eat food, I always feel cooked food, right? I always feel very sluggish and tired and bloated. But this particular raw vegan meal was like, I'm so energized, you know? So, um, yeah, I was just like, how come I'm not feeling tired? Like two hours later, how come I'm not tired? <laughs> Three hours later, I'm like, I'm so super energized. So I started um, learning more about, yeah, I started doing more research. And then I found out about uh, Matthew Kenny. I don't know whether you've heard of Matthew Kenny mm -hmm. before. He's, yeah. So um, Matthew Kenny, at that time, that was in 2014, 2015. Yeah, he was very, in, he was also very into the raw movement then. Now he's like, he's doing cooked stuff, not so much of raw. Um, so the, their culinary academy offered courses. So I took my first Matthew Kenny raw vegan course in, um, I think, beginning of 2015, January or February. I think January. Yeah, that was like my birthday month. January of 2015. And then I was like blown away because, you know, the course, they, they teach you, they have proper training. So they teach you how to make um, everything, you know, from breakfast, lunch, dinner, beverages, appetizers, um, desserts. So that whole year, I was just like, making all this raw vegan food and then i found that my eczema healed so i was like um i suffered from that for like 30 years yeah and then um and then i was trying all sorts of treatments right for 30 years i had like i i did like um skin specialist it's horrible they just give you steroid creams and then i did like um tra traditional chinese medicine that did not help i did like Ayurvedic treatments that did not help. So I lived with that until then when I started doing all the raw vegan stuff, it's like, oh my God, it healed. So um, yeah, so I kept to that. And um, when I took my first course, it was just to learn how to make better tasting raw vegan food um, because they didn't have the ultimate raw vegan bundle yet. You know, So I was just trying to make better tasting vegan food for my boyfriend because the recipes that I found online uh, on raw vegan stuff at that time in 2014 was kind of like a hit and miss. I think now there are way more better recipes now. And then in 2016, Matthew Kenny opened up his um, culinary academy in Thailand. So that was the first uh, raw vegan culinary academy in Asia. So I went there and took two more courses. And again, I wasn't, I wasn't planning to be a raw food chef at that time. But when I came back uh, after um, from Thailand, um, I had even more people asking. They were just very curious and asking me about it. And I started putting, posting pictures on Instagram because I just wanted to uh, record my personal journey. Then 
you know, I started getting requests from people like, can you teach? Can you do a workshop? Can you do this? So I started doing that. And then, um, yeah, I just haven't stopped since. <laughs> wow. That's an amazing story. That's, that's incredible. I'm blown away. And you're just, yeah, it's so inspirational, so inspirational. And it's so great to see other, you know, people on this journey. And can I ask, I'm also kind of younger for the health journey. How old are you? Oh, <laughs> do you want to guess? <laughs> <laughs> you honestly look very young you look like 20 to me but that's I don't know. Yeah, yeah like yeah that wouldn't make sense right if i suffered from eczema for, <laughs> for 30 yeah. years um i i actually turned 50 this year no, no way oh my yes. gosh i'm blown away there's no way you're 50 <laughs> it's the power of um raw vegan food <laughs> wow that, yes. you look my age that's that's breathtaking wow that's amazing. Thank you. And you've been raw for how long? Um, so I started going raw in 2015. I started transitioning. So I'm still not, I'm not 100% raw. Um, I do eat some cooked meals from uh, maybe in a week. I try to limit it like two to three times a week. And that's just because, you know, if I'm eating out or, um, yeah, when I'm eating out or when I'm traveling. Or sometimes, because my boyfriend's not 100% raw, so I make him cook food and sometimes I'm like, oh, let me try a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And do you really contribute your agelessness to raw foods? Uh, part of it, but I think what happens is um, once you go on this journey, then it kind of takes you to understand other things as well. Like, um, you know, like suddenly I realized like, oh, you know, I have like so much toxic things in my, you know, like just like um, detergent. And you know, I started, yeah, then I started going like, oh, okay, I need to get rid of my, you know, all the toxic detergents I, I didn't want to use, like, and then I stopped using makeup. And then, um, um, I think it just creates more awareness and you started becoming more conscious. Then there was like a focus on sleep hygiene as well. So, um, I used to sleep at midnight and all that, or past midnight last time, but now I, I try and uh, I try to go to bed by 10, but usually it's 10 30. <laughs> You know, and then that also, I think, yeah, you become more conscious. So like, you know, I started on a meditation practice or daily movement practice, mm -hmm. um, connecting with nature as well. So I think it's a whole holistic approach to it. Um, I don't think it's just being raw vegan, but, um, but I think that's a huge part of it as well, because um, I think a lot of people talk about how a raw vegan lifestyle will um, reverse aging or stop aging so I think that helps a lot yeah definitely yeah absolutely I definitely agree that kind of eating healthier takes you on this whole health journey to like take care yes. of in so many different ways I definitely yeah. experienced that myself and that's that's really amazing I'm really just blown away by how healthy you are and how amazing you are um, what kind of led to the whole like have you always kind of been really into food and like the culinary aspect because you have some outstanding recipes i gotta tell you oh thank you thank you so i've always been a foodie and i've always enjoyed eating food but um it can be quite surprising um that i never i never learned how to cook until i left home and moved out and then had a kitchen of my own and then like had to force <laughs> i was forced to learn how to make food because before that, when I lived with my parents, it's just like, you know, I'll just eat whatever my parents cooked or, you know, yeah, or we, I think at one time we catered from our neighbors as well. But I've always enjoyed food. Um, I didn't enjoy cooking though at that time because I know uh, when I was like a teenager, I would sometimes have to help my dad with food prep. And he's, he's very particular, like, oh, you need to slice the garlic in a certain way, you need to mince, you know, you need to cut the onions in a certain way and all that. And I found it actually very stressful. Um, and I found like, when I was a teenager, a lot of my friends around me, my age actually knew how to cook. And I was just like, ah, no, nah, I'll just, uh, um. and I remember I had like, aunts, you know, like nosy relatives who tell you things like, oh, what you don't know how to cook how are you gonna get a husband they're, they're like <laughs> and i would say things like oh just find someone who knows how to cook but uh no <laughs> but uh, i think when i moved out then i i um i had to 
like call my mom and go like, oh, okay, I want to make this spinach soup. How do I make it? So she would like tell me over the phone how to make it. And I started making, and then I started getting like really interested. Um, so I think I started making my own food, cooking my food in 2004. Um, yeah, so I was always cooking from 2004 to 2014. I was cooking and then, then yeah, and then I found out about the raw vegan stuff and then I was like, yeah, <laughs> super excited fascinated yeah and then i was just like very passionate about it i think yeah wow that's amazing yeah and to learn how to cook and to build that passion that's wonderful and now look at you you're building recipe courses and cooking <laughs> classes that's amazing that's awesome so as a chef what what do you eat in a typical day um so it depends i mean if i am if I am developing a specific course, then I will be doing the recipe testing and development. Uh, so I'll be usually eating that. Um, so I think when I was developing co this course, my boyfriend was like eating desserts all the time. <laughs> he was my tester as well. Um, and then, but usually, uh, typical day, depending. Okay, so for breakfast, I either just have fruit uh, or I'm, Oh, I have a smoothie bowl. Yeah. Um, yeah, it depends on how much time I have and it depends on whether I'm inspired. If I'm, if I'm like rushing around, I just like have like, you know, four or five bananas with some, some, yeah, with some chia seeds and some superfoods. Um, if I have a slightly bit more time or um, sometimes I'm just in the mood, then I'll make myself like a, a green smoothie bowl with some bananas. Um, I like to eat my smoothies these days because also I think because if you you have some fruit to chew in your smoothies, then you're sending the digestive signals to your your stomach as well. Your gut, not your stomach. Anyway, it digests better. So I like um, rather than having just you know a smoothie in a, a mason jar kind of thing. So I have a smoothie bowl which I can eat, or I just eat fruits. Um, for lunch, I usually just make myself a big giant salad. Yeah. Um. So I'm. After reading, uh, I don't know whether you checked out Matt Bennett's uh, ebook in the Ultimate mm -hmm. Raw Vegan Bundle. Mm -hmm. He has an ebook called like um, what Five Star Salad Revolution, I think. Yeah, so um, I met him on the I think the bundle in twenty twenty one, and he had a a book called Five Star Salad Mastery at the time. So after reading that, I realized like oh, I should include like. Uh, one pound of greens into my salad. So I started doing that. Um, so I usually have a salad for lunch. Although people usually, the raw foodies will say you should have the salad for dinner. But I find, I just find it's, I, I, I am more motivated to make a salad for lunch. And then for dinner, I usually just have fruit and just have a mono meal. Yeah. So I get my greens in for uh, lunch. Yeah, that's where my, my one pound of greens come in. Nice. So that's, yeah, that's typically what I eat. Um, and then sometimes I get bored of eating salads. Then I, um, you know, I make uh, raw vegan burgers or I make raw vegan pizzas or um, noodles, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so amazing. Oh, I love that. Yeah, lots of, I honestly think salads are great for lunch. Sometimes I definitely have more time in that lunchtime area and definitely have more motivation to make a salad as well. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, I made Lisa's wraps and I think I made three of her wraps. It's so good. It's like really, really good. So I think, I think from now on, I'm going to make more wraps as well because you know, her hand salad book in the bundle has like 33 wrap recipes. So yeah, that's something I would definitely want to explore. Yeah. Her um, her amazing. Like, yeah, she has so many great recipes for sure. She does. And um, today, if I have time, I might try and make Sky's um, falafels. Yeah, because I've already sprouted the, um, I've sprouted the chickpeas and also like part of the recipe for the falafel is you need to make her raw sriracha sauce. So I made the raw sriracha sauce yesterday and it's big. It's like, yeah, it's like the whole, I think it came up to here or something. It was like, a full thing so I, I i i use some of it for my salad dressing then hopefully today um in the afternoon i have some time to make the falafel so that will be cool so yeah from time to time i do that because my boyfriend doesn't really like to eat like salads like a big bowl of salad but 
you know, if it's in the form of a raw vegan burger or if it's a form of a raw vegan pizza or it's the wraps, like give him the wraps. He loved the wraps. He was like, I could eat five of these. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. Oh yeah, definitely incorporating healthy food. Oh, I love that. Yeah, definitely sometimes I feel like, yeah, having the wrap for the pizza just makes it funner to eat and it's a lot more enjoyable for sure, for sure. Um, as a chef, though, what tips do you have for, like, food prep and cooking? Like, what's your secret? I, I think planning is very important um, because um, then you know exactly what you need to, well, yeah, what you need to grocery shop, what you need to buy, um, and then what are the steps you need to do because, like, you know, like, like the falafels, you need to, um, you need to sprout the chickpeas first. So you need to do some advanced planning. And even for the wraps, if you, because you'll need to make the wraps, because it takes like at least 12 to 14 hours to dehydrate. So if you plan everything in advance and then you just fall step by step, then yeah, so that makes things easier. And then, um, you know, get all your items ready, get, get all your equipment out. I mean, because you will, if you're making the, um, yeah, wraps, you'll need, um, you know, you'll need your, your blender, that kind of thing. So you have everything ready and prepped in advance. So when you're doing the actual uncooking process, then uh, it makes it much easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you talked a lot about incorporating the Asian kind of raw food. And so how do you incorporate those Asian flavors and those Asian dishes into raw food? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is very interesting. So when I was trained, I was trained... Um, to use, I mean, basically make mostly uh, Western food. I mean, there is things like, you know, raw pad thai or um, nori rolls, that kind of thing. But um, um, but I, because Asia is so big, right? I'm, I'm in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. um, which is basically Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, you know, Philippines, Singapore, Brunei, that kind of thing. But then there's also like, you know, there's also like, india there's also like china there's also like korea there's also like japan um i think people in the u.s just lump everything into asia but we're so big and so diverse and each country has a different cuisine and different flavor profiles i mean take where i am in malaysia in fact each state has like different kinds of taste and flavor profiles as well so i wanted to introduce all this to more people so that people don't think like, you know, <laughs> raw vegan Asian food is just nori rolls and raw pad thai, you know. Um, so what I do is just basically take the same techniques of um, raw food prep, which would be cutting, chopping, food processing, blending, dehydrating, spiralizing, fermentation, sprouting. Take all that and then apply it to um, the Asian flavor profiles instead. So what I do is I, um, I always study what uh, uh, the original traditional recipe is, the cooked recipe, and usually it's not a vegan recipe. And then I think of like, okay, how do I... Okay, let's say if I want to make like a Thai tom yum soup. I think people are usually familiar, I think, with the Thai tom yum soup. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like kind of like a hot and spicy uh, and sour tom yum soup. So I think of like, um, what are the ingredients that goes into a tom yum? And, um, I, and I want to try and keep it as authentic as possible. So I get, I make sure that I get the herbs and spices that goes into that tom yum, you know, and then um, usually you need to cook it. So since we're not cooking it, uh, what I did, I, I think for this, I took some of the spices and herbs blended it up in the Vitamix and then I strained it so you still get the flavor in the broth yeah and then um, yeah just basically using the same the same ingredients as well but um, maybe you may need to dehydrate them or maybe um, you need to freeze them first and thaw them and let them warm up and so that it has a softer feel so that kind of thing but basically it's just thinking of um using the same herbs spices vegetables and then after that if it's a kind of like a meat thing 
then think of what are your meat substitutes. I mean, usually we just use mushrooms. Or if you don't want to use mushrooms, you could uh, possibly use like things like um, eggplants. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I do. That's amazing. Any favorite dishes that you got? That's, they all sound delicious, but any favorite? Okay, so um, are you talking about the bundle or just, just like maybe you know, your go to? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, what uh, one of the recipes that I really really liked and it was I really enjoyed is um, the raw vegan rendang. Um, so this is like uh, it comes from Indonesia, um, but it's also uh, very popular here in Malaysia. Uh, we're we're just next to Indonesia, so you know we kind of share like. Um, very similar uh, similar flavor profiles. So this has a lot of um, herbs and spices, Indonesian herbs and spices. I can't remember how many. A lot. <laughs> like maybe like 10 or 15 or something like that. But that uh, contributes to the actual taste. And I think I use mushrooms. Yeah, I use mushrooms as a meat substitute. It's basically a dry beef meat stew curry thing. You know, that's the rendang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that's one of my favorites. Um, in, the, in the bundle where I do my Asian sweets and treats, um, uh, what I really like was... This is the... Yeah. What I really like was the boba tea. I don't know whether that's popular where you live. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah, we have oh. lots, of, yeah, lots of boba tea, lots of different types of drinks. Is that your favorite? I, I really like it because I remember when... Um, I first had boba in Malaysia. Oh, it was so popular. It's like, there's a line you have to queue up to get, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, 20 minutes before you can actually get your boba tea. Um, this was many years ago. And uh, my boyfriend and I, we will always go and get it. Um, but after a while, and this was before I was vegan and raw vegan. So yeah, when I became raw vegan, I was like, oh, I don't think we we shouldn't be drinking this tea anymore. It's like it's got so much sugar, it's got so much artificial flavor, and so much artificial coloring. I was like, this is really bad for us. So we just stopped. And um, I think so. I was like, oh, I really need to make a raw vegan version of it. And um, so I was testing to make the you know the boba pearls. They call it. It's traditionally it's made from tapioca starch, um, but uh, of it, uh, tapioca is toxic when it's raw, so uh, I couldn't use tapioca. So I was trying out different recipes to get it right, and then um, and then I needed to get it chewy as well because there's the term in Taiwanese called QQ because you want it, which is like kind of like a chewy texture. So so yeah, I had to test it a few times. Then uh uh. It's pretty, it's close. I don't think it's exactly the same, but you know, raw vegan food is never going to taste exactly the same as cooked food. But when you make the boba and you make the tea and then you get the straw and then you slurp it or uh, it, it feels like a really nice boba tea experience. And there's no guilt because, you know, it's, it's made, it's all natural. There's no nasties in it. You know, there's no dairy milk. There's no refined sugar. I use one. I use date powder as well. So, yeah. Um, or you can use you know coconut nectar if you don't mind using coconut nectar. Or you can use maple syrup. But yeah, I mean the one that has like sugar free was like with date powder. And um, yeah, and for that you can make so many different kinds. You know, I think I have like four or five different boba teas in there. I I wanted to actually make more, but I just didn't have time. You know, so maybe after the bundle is over, I might come up with more recipes for, for the boba tea. So yeah, I think that's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite. I love that so much. Incorporating that experience of like the culture and the cultural food, but then also making it healthy and raw and just, you know, not having that guilt with food. And it's not, yeah. I mean, it's not the same, but it's still like that whole experience, which is really important for just, you know, your mental health as well as your physical health. Um, Going into you yeah. doing this for so long, what other tips do you have for people trying to look to eat more raw food? I think if they're just starting out going raw, I think um, I would say take it step by step because I find like I've met people who try going raw overnight and then they fall off the bandwagon. 
Uh, whereas I find like if people do it step by step, and you know maybe you try and incorporate like one raw meal a day kind of thing just for breakfast, or you know or a portion you know make sure you include a portion of raw in in your lunch or your dinner, and then take it from there. And I I don't think it's a crime if you're not hundred percent raw. I I hate these labels, you know. Like you need to be hundred percent raw. Like oh, you're not raw if you are using nutritional yeast and things like that. So um, I think take it step by step. That's really good. Um, I think if you have a community, um, that's really important. Um, in Malaysia, it's very strange. I in not strange, but you know, it's like on one hand, I live in a tropical country where fresh fruit. And fresh produce is available all year round, um, so it's perfect, right, for being a raw vegan. But the other thing is, in Malaysia, there's a huge foodie culture, and everybody eats like everybody loves to eat cooked food, and it's also really very right, affordable to eat out. Um, but there are no raw vegan restaurants here in Malaysia, so you know people just yeah so. I haven't really met many raw vegans here. Uh, I mean, like on and off, I do meet one or two, but I don't think we've we've never ever like you know done a meet up or oh there was one person who organized a fruit luck, but now he's no longer <laughs> vegan, so I don't know. Um, I think I know another lady who is also um focusing on raw, but I think she does this fruit only. So I'm waiting for her to organize the fruit luck. Uh, I used to organize meetups last time, um, but I'm I got tired of organizing meetups. It's like it's a lot of effort, and then you're like, oh, people go to Twitter, but they not. I mean, people do, um, but I do have. There is a vegan community here, so that that's really nice to just hang out with the vegan community. So you have that support because um, I think a lot of people can't continue with it because you know they're just doing it alone. Um, which is why I think this this raw vegan bundle is great as well because it's a great way to meet other raw vegans and to connect with them. And um, I, I always tell Lisa, I'm like, I'm so glad you organized it so I don't feel so isolated in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really important to build community. And I also agree with what you said about labels. I don't really like the labels either. Um, I think it's just important to eat healthy and eat what makes you feel good and what helps you give, you know, energy and vitality and helps you heal. Um, and then building that community. I mean, I, you know, in America, there is a bit of a vegan community as well, but not a huge raw vegan community. Um, mm. And building that community is really important and it's fun to connect over social media and, and see other people living healthily and living living their best life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but what other tips do you have? I mean, yeah, I, I loved how what you said about transitioning and going slowly. Um, any other tips for, you know, making recipes and having success as a raw vegan? Um, maybe just, like, very simple things. Like, I, I have, I know, I know someone who told me, like, she doesn't read through a recipe until she actually wants to make it. And then she, then, then she realized, like, oh, I was supposed to do this step in advance. I oh, I'm supposed to get this and all that. So just like making sure you read through, through the recipes, I suppose, before actually doing it. Um, planning. Um, I mean, have you, have you um, experienced yeah, any difficulties? Or um, because maybe if you tell me like, you know, what are the obstacles or challenges that you have, then, then I can yeah. you know, respond to that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like honestly the the food prep is really important right just like planning what you're going to make um and then i think honestly the biggest thing that people struggle with is just the misconception around you know can i get all my nutrition with the raw vegan diet can i get all my protein can i get you know all the things i need to make this actually a sustainable diet and you've had a lot of experience and you are clearly thriving on the raw vegan diet can you give you know people some reassurance about the actual health benefits of eating mostly raw foods? Yeah, I mean, I I'm more of an intuitive person, so I don't like I don't so number one I don't like to count calories. I know like sometimes I do my workshops. I remember I had this lady come up to me and she goes like, oh, how many calories are there in this? And I was just like, I don't know, but I'm not worried about it because she was worried. She she was like, you know, I'm trying to keep slim and all that. I said. As a raw vegan, I, I, I always have to make sure that I make 
eat enough calories, right? Yeah. Not like I need to eat less. So, um, yeah, but I always, and when people always ask me about like, yeah, are you getting enough protein, enough carbs, you know, your macros, your micros. And I always tell them like, oh, you know, you can key on into chronometer. There's a chronometer app mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, and then there are, there are, I think, two or three other apps as well, but most people use Chronometer. If you, you can key that all in, and then you can see, if you're really interested to see, like, you know, how much, pro- are you meeting your protein requirements? Are you meeting your iron requirements? And all that as well. I mean, I did that in the beginning. I mean, I've done it a few times, but um, I usually don't, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't have, I'm just a bit lazy to key in all those, those things. And also, I just kind of like, I think my body kind of tells me because I remember when I was traveling um, yeah, recently in January and then um, I was eating a bit more fruit and then I think it came to a point because fruit was just easy to eat when you're traveling rather than making a huge giant salad. And then I could feel my body going like, okay, you need more greens, go eat some greens, you know. So yeah, I, I think I, I focus a lot on that. I also think like, and I had many discussions about this, about the protein thing. I have to keep telling people like, okay, number one, protein comes from plants. All plants have protein. <laughs> Even watermelon has protein, you know, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, um, and I did an Instagram live actually with Chef of Ocean talking about that as well. And the focus should be more on amino acids, not proteins. And the amino acids are all found in the plants anyway. And I think protein is like kind of overrate, overrated. Um, I think there should be more focus on fiber. Like, are you getting enough fiber? <laughs> Rather than, you know, I, uh, where do you get your protein? Especially, I mean, I don't know anyone who has like died from a protein deficiency, <laughs> you know? Uh, I completely <laughs> agree. Protein is definitely a huge concern for people. And really, it should be more about are you getting enough, you know, vitamins and minerals and fiber? Right. I don't know anyone that's struggling in getting protein, but I know a lot of people struggling from constipation and gut issues, <laughs> not eating enough, you know, greens and varieties and vitamins and fiber. Um, and often you also see, you know, liver and kidney failure because of eating too much protein. So I feel like protein should not be a big concern. Yeah. I think what I do, because I do my week, uh, I, I um, do my grocery shopping weekly. What I do is like when I, when I buy my vegetables and fruits and all that, I just make sure that um, I get like, you know, some cruciferous vegetables, I get some tender leafy greens, I make sure I get the colors as well, you know, like, you know how they talk about eating a rainbow, so I make sure I have some, you know, the orange carrots, I have some purple sweet potatoes, I have um, my red tomatoes, my red bell peppers, my yellow bell peppers, so I'm, I'm like, yeah, eating the rainbow as well, so I, um, I think that's an easy way to make sure that, you know, you're getting like, a diverse um, diversity in your your fruits and vegetables and also um, in, in your nutrients as well. And I just, um, uh, the other thing is, oh yeah, I also rotate my greens um, because I know some people who are just like, oh, I just eat spinach. I'm like, that's all. <laughs> like, <laughs> but whereas I make sure like, you know, I have spinach, I have bok choy, I have, um, yeah, I have celery, I have kale, I have, um, in fact, I like to, I, I try and do a lot of, I try and eat more local. So like, um, yeah, in, in, in Malaysia, we have so many different kinds of um, local greens, you know, like things that I guess other people wouldn't have heard of before. Yeah. So people are going like, what's this? What's that? You know? So yeah, I just try and order a variety of the different greens so that I can put them in. So I have Thailand, I have Choi Sam, I have Night Park, I have, um, you know, there's amaranth. There's so many things. Yeah. Wow, so that that's the other thing. Yeah, that's amazing. That's, uh, that's really good advice. Yeah, getting lots of variety and you know, yeah. up and you know, going local. Yeah. Is that hard? yeah, I, you know, good variety or it sounds like you have a lot of options there in Malaysia. Yes, we do because um, it's a tropical country here. Um, we do not have four seasons. We, it's just hot, humid, and rainy. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of rainfall so um we have um fresh green vegetables all year round i don't have the problem and yeah like i said it's actually a good place to to be raw vegan because there's no winter so you don't like crave you know like warm hot 
food or hot stews or that kind of thing. And, um, and there's just like so much easy access to um, fresh produce over here. Yeah. I guess the other tip um, I wish someone had given me was like, I remember when I first started uh, going raw vegan, um, I didn't understand the, the idea of calorie density and I didn't understand that I needed to eat way much more, you know? So I was hungry all the time. I would make like um, zucchini noodles, right? But I'll just make it from one zucchini. And then after like, you know, after eating after an hour or two, I'll be like, I'm hungry, you know? Yeah. So like, yeah, so now I realize that, oh, I think if I eat, if I'm just eating noodles, I'll most probably eat like at least three or four zucchinis or something like that. <laughs> so um yeah so much later i realized like oh, i'm supposed to be eating way much more and and not to be afraid i think people people are, are like they they get freaked out when i you know when, when we, you know how raw vegans buy so many bananas right mm. and then they're like you're eating five bananas for breakfast and i'm like yeah you know you need to get enough calories in <laughs> yeah mm. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, Emma. I have to... Hold on. I think I have to go because yeah, the, my delivery have, is coming. Yeah, we can wrap Yeah. We talked a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I will see, yeah. you. I will see you soon. I'll make a post as a collaborator. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. I have to go. <laughs>